Hello guys and welcome to a new Star Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. In this one I have for you a 10 versus 10 on Slutsk and I'm going to be playing with the 19th tank core and the balanced deployment type. Wanted to share this game with you guys today just because it was a really fun one and it really shows off some of the strengths of the 19th tank core. It's a division that I really don't cover or play all that much. So I thought this was a good opportunity to show it off. As you can see that I have started with the IS-2 and the SU-152s and this is kind of the backbone of the 19th tank corps. They are an IS-2 division that gets access to SU-152s. There are, are, are IS-2 divisions that get access to ISU-152s as well. But the nice thing about SU-152s is they actually have this kind of interesting modifier where their HE is more likely to crit and I think ISU-152s might get it as well, but because like SU-152s are so cheap at 70 points, they're incredibly effective. Anyway, SU-152 is going to be getting line of sight onto the church, and the poor MG-42 gets absolutely evaporated from that position. Meanwhile, my Straki DP have moved up here with the Razvedka, and I've also got a 37mm AA piece that has been brought up. Now this AA piece, you might notice if I hold line of sight tool down by pressing C, it doesn't quite have line of sight all the way forwards like this. Instead it can only be seen like 500 meters over the ridge, but it's still more than capable of firing at the aircraft to fly overhead. So it's in a really, really good position where it can be far forwards, but without being able to be direct fired by enemy forces. Uh, across this open ground. Now, I've managed to get an SU-152 up on the ridge now and that's going to help smash some of the infantry that has decided to push in opposite our teammate here, Valdus, who is trying to hold that ground. IS-2 is a leader, so that is providing the extra veterancy, making these SU-152s to vet and the uh, IS-2 here uh, sorry, and the 37. The SU-152, you can see the first shot, it shoots and knocks the Stur. Unfortunately, the IS-2 didn't get a shot on target there, so the Stur-42 is going to be able to get out. But that's a good example of how these SU-152s can crit enemy units, and that's what can make them so strong, particularly for 70 points. I think normally an ISU-152 is like 110 points, but they do get the AT... Uh, munitions which can be really really useful for engaging at range but at the moment uh, things are going really really well um, so Sebastian has managed to get a couple of Sapoli up on this left hand side and is capturing us two of the flags that should have started on their side um, we are actually a man down in this game and I think it was little Sebastian who, who dropped as an AI so the AI's kind of like found a hole in the front line <laughs> using its hacks <laughs> because the AI does cheat <laughs> um, but in this case capturing two flags for us very nice indeed anyway we're going to be continuing our engagement on top of this hill the SU-152 is just in such a perfect position here to support these infantry engagements this time around taking out another MG-42 and what I am going to have to be careful of is Ra Endymion bringing up the elephant now this elephant very very scary for my IS-2. My IS-2 cannot penetrate it in the frontal armor but the M10 can hit it on the move and transmission damage which is an absolutely heroic shot from Nathan. Definitely gonna make that uh, elephant less effective. Uh, the nice thing about transmission damage on an elephant is it's already extremely slow and then <laughs> the transmission damage makes it go even slower so the elephant now backing up and that's going to allow us to maintain our position here on this hill for a little while longer. So what I'm going to do meanwhile is bring up a couple of T-34s and these T-34-85s, they're going to be sneaking up through the buildings. I noticed that on top of the hill here Martin was under a little bit of pressure, particularly by these uh, Stug 3s and other armoured units. So I'm hoping that my T-34-85-1943s with their APCR shells 
going to be very effective at taking care of the uh, Stug 3s. Ideally, I actually want to engage without the APCR because the AP shells are more than capable of getting through the frontal armor, or in this case, even the side armor of a Stug 3. So yeah, I should ideally be using the AP uh, shell, but I'm going to be firing first with the APCR. And I do manage to get a load of kill, so the T-34 going to have plenty of time to finish this off. One reason to keep the APCR shells on is that they do have a higher base accuracy than the AP shells by 10%, which is actually quite significant. So when you're further away, or like max range with an APCR shell, it's actually maybe more favorable to use an APCR shell. Also, APCR shells are much more likely to cause crits. As you can see, we got the sight damage on the Stug 3 there. The Stug 3, the second Stug 3, going to be moving away. The first one did go down. Trying to take off a little bit of pressure of Martin, who is currently getting double teamed up on the hill there. Meanwhile, on the left-hand side, you can see that I have moved the SU-152s off the hill now with the IS-2, uh, because the elephant was making a show for itself once again, and I obviously can't continue to engage that. So yeah, the IS-2 coming off, and I could potentially move this across and help engage the Panther D on the edge of the hill here. Uh, we can use the SV-152s to continue to engage infantry on the side of the hill as well, particularly these Fauschmega ZF. I spoke previously about how these are extremely expensive squads at 40 points a pop. Really, really good target for an SU-152 because I kill a couple of those infantry squads with an SU-152 and the SU-152 has paid itself off. So, yeah, definitely a target, a good target for it. Although the MG-42 going down there first. Martin's Mortar looking to try and finish off the 88 and does manage to do so. That's going to make it easier for my T-34s to engage out the edge of the uh, buildings there. At the moment, left side still going pretty well. We have still got the 20 to 12 flags on the right hand side. McShav has managed to push through on his lonesome. So nicely done up against Gargamore. We're going to take the opportunity to peek with the T-34 85s and kill off a low health pack 38. Finish up and go next and kill the Panzer II. You're now going to be looking for the damage Stug 3. See if we can get the triple. First shot missed, unfortunately. But oh, baby, a triple. <laughs> okay, well, off map's now coming down. Uh, which is certainly helping deal with a lot of this infantry. Actually, that's not even off map. That's a 152mm ML20 from Shock. How MLG of Shock that is. Uh, I'm going to be continuing to engage towards the town. SU-85. Going to be engaging some of the light armor on the edge of this hill. SU-152 is doing the same. IS-2 going to be trying to creep up. And... Uh, help get off the Stur 42s and Stooks maybe if I can get onto the road here or maybe in between the buildings to get shots. So I've just got to be careful of this ridge right now. Uh, thankfully my, my units here are kind of covering that. So we're doing pretty well. I have now started to bring up uh, SU-76s. Because my IS-2 is going to be incapable of dealing with the elephant at range, the next best thing for me to use is artillery. So the SU-76s are really nice because much like Centaurs that I have shown used with the first SSB, they are a self-propelled gun that has decent fire rate and accuracy with the radio. So I'm able to pick up a few of these and then really start to put the pain onto the elephant but by aiming quickly and firing quickly. And that combination is really, really good for taking out slow tanks, particularly ones that have already been transmission damaged. So I'm going to be kind of heavily investing into these SC-76s to try and uh, take advantage. IS-2 is finally going to move across far enough to take out the Stug-3, so I managed to do that. Meanwhile, on the right-hand side, T-34 managed to take out another half tower Panzer II. Achilles or Valdis going to be trading for the Panzer IV-J, unfortunately. Yeah, uh, Achilles doesn't really need to trade in that situation, kind of got unlucky uh, because the Achilles does have 2,000 meter range, so it can outrange the uh, Panzer IV. In this case, you're probably wondering what the hell killed my IS-2. Well, 
is a magical thing called a Pupshun. And uh, they are extremely strong with 750 meter range. And there was a Pupshun up on this hill that managed to kill off my IS-2. So IS-2 suffering a sad fate there. Now there's no tank really to stop this Panther D from taking control of this ridge properly. But things have somewhat stabilized on the hill. Shocks brought up a couple of SU-76s to help engage stuff at close range. These are nice 35 point um, SU-76 variants. And you can see a Panzer 4J there also going to be going down uh, to I guess some artillery. I'm not entirely sure what that was. It might have been one of the SU-152 SU just popping it uh, with its HE round because the Panzer 4 was already damaged. Anyway, at the moment we did have to relinquish the flag up on the top of the hill here for our Endymion, making good use of his advantage with the Elephant. But we are still maintaining the flags on the left hand side. Unfortunately, McShab's push on the right hand side has been slowly but surely broken down as Sleepy Joe advances with his Elephant and Tiger P by the looks things. And there's that Stripen trying to <laughs> kill off the tanker this Sanniki. It's currently 19 to 13, 18 minutes left on the clock till a victory for our team. SU-152 trying its best to keep getting shots on target. This one can't crest the ridge because of the Marder 3s. Uh, the P-40 also has 1,750 meter range and the elephant there of course being the scariest target. I have now decided to bring up my own Sapodi and the M2A1 into the town to assist Valdis's commando infantry. He's now invested in his 127mm off map. So you only get one of these as the first SSP, but is extremely strong. And in this case, it's going to hit a lot of infantry that's waiting ahead of him. Although a lot of these transports did just manage to sneak through before that landed, uh, which was kind of lucky for them, because otherwise they would have been killed off just the same as these Panzergrands. So that artillery strike going to be hitting very, very hard indeed. SU-76, chin on its own still. Definitely going to reinforce that soon. But the IS-2 is going to be my first reinforcement, as I have saved up and decided to bring in this IS-2. IS-2 is pretty good at engaging infantry. And you can see that it does chunk infantry pretty well going to get hit now by the elephant though and that's really really bad i'm just going to try and continue to fast move it up the road so i can get it behind the trees here and into cover and the elephant gets the job done right and on really really causing me problems with that the 230 millimeters of penetration and just so much of a problem for me so off maps on its job painted a nice circle a lot of the infantry really really weakened or killed and the flag should soon be under our control p39 trying to go for a little bit of rocket strike there not going to be able to do so and because there is a8 nice and close up that's going to come under the immediate artillery of my su-76 if we can break down the a8 of the elephant, like the AA surrounding the elephant, then the elephant's vulnerable to airstrikes from our teammates. So that was kind of my plan uh, with the SU-76 now for the time being. On the right hand side, still kind of helping hold the line here in the open. If any armor pops out, I will engage it. At the moment though, it's not really beneficial for me to engage like the 88, for example, because it's gonna take me ages to kill it. And it's not currently in line of sight. If it was in line of sight when it was falling back, I could probably move up and start shooting it. But you've got to be careful of AT guns that might sneak up into the light cover here. There's also potential there could be an AT gun in this heavy cover. Meanwhile, on the left-hand side, mortars are going to be getting the better of my 37. And whilst sitting on the edge of this hill will stop it from being killed by direct fire, it's not going to stop it from being killed by indirect fire. And it's currently getting spotted probably quite easily by any units that were on the right hand side here or it got spotted earlier 
um, maybe buy a unit on this ridge. So, yeah, 37 goes down. A little bit unfortunate for me. But SU-152 surviving for the time being. Now, on this left-hand side, I have decided to bring in the 203 mil. This might have actually been what killed the Panzer IV earlier. It's a pretty chunky 203mm artillery piece. It's not the best artillery piece in the world just because it is quite vulnerable to enemy counter battery. But if you get them in early, they can be kind of effective at killing off enemy armor and support weapons. In this case, we're trying to kill off the IG-33. First shot, however, landing quite short. But a direct hit from a 203 uh, would do a significant amount of damage. Now Martin investing in off-map to try and push our green keeper completely off the hill here. And Martin, with a little bit of help from Shock, has broken back on that side. SU-152 also helping from the light cover here. You can see as soon as I spot the SDK Z71, artillery is coming down on that immediately. The 203 is still trying to kill the IG-33. Landed a couple shots nearby, but not one on target. Kind of unfortunate for me. Last shot there, almost getting it off. But that's going to stop firing. It fires four rounds per salvo, I believe. As he goes at 7-1, gets taken out. Nice direct hit by the SU-76s. Gotta be a bit careful of this Marta 3 that's pushing forwards though. IS-2 trying to move up and engage the Marta 3 there. But very, very vulnerable to the elephant, so a little bit of mistake here by Sapi. T-34 does get off the Marta 3. Now needs to just back out of there as soon as possible. Pack 38 bounces. Elephant penetrates. But manages to get into the ridge here. And out of line of sight. So we're actually back to a 17 to 15. Because you might notice on the right hand side. A lot of this heavy armor has now come into play. Uh, in a 10v10 naturally. Um, the longer the game goes. Generally, the more advantage goes to the Axis on an open map. And Slutsk is pretty much as open as it comes. And things like the Tiger Peas, the Porsche Tigers, they are really, really strong. They get two VAT, 165mm penetration gun, 170mm frontal armor. Things like the Elephant with 230mm of penetration with 190mm of frontal armor. you got Panthers that are just going to be perfect snipers especially against t-34s at max range like things get very 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 difficult so we are on a little bit of a time here got to make sure that we try and finish the job uh, i've now got all of my su-76s in position as you can see and that's what helped us kill off the sdk z71 i've also have uh, brought up a visuvod this is an artillery leader that is reducing the dispersion of the artillery units within the inner circle. The outer circle is leadership, so you can see I've got the 37mm AA just inside that, so that benefits from the leadership as well. Uh, the SU-76s also get leadership, so you can see these two are one star, this one's not, because it's not in line, it's not in range of this outer circle. And this one isn't also benefiting from the dispersion reduction. But we're firing away and my artillery currently doing a decent job. The 203 there managing to kill off the IG-33. Now going to be targeting the Sturmpanzer. So you'll see now I'm moving the SU-76 into range of the inner circle. So that it also benefits from that. The way I'm doing that, I'm just right clicking and then I'm just clicking stop when it comes just inside the circle so I have it exactly where I want it. So we're going to be splitting the the rounds here a little bit to take out the Para Espelatori and uh, also some of the Fauchemi again Decima on the left hand side. SU 85 is moving up here. Just looking to peak the ridge and take out the Sturmpanzer was the plan. Do manage to get the penetration. Now going to be firing at the IG. Take that out. 
now looking to get another shot onto the Sturm Panzer, but the Pack 38 has engaged me on the right hand side. And unfortunately, the SU 85 there, not a hero this time around. But my SU 76 is still doing a good job as we managed to unload two units of infantry. And the Pala Espedatori finally going to go down. Now we have the Multia Vilfa engaging. Uh, the 105s back here, it's pretty just as well it wasn't engaging my artillery. 203 is starting to run out of ammunition on the left hand side. Now the T-34s potentially might come back into play as two Stokes have now arrived once again on the right side of that hill. We do have some Borgvards heading our way. IS-2 1943 looking to kill those off. It's kind of interesting in this case that Ryan Dimon has decided to use them in the open. Great way to use Borg bars generally is to smoke them off. And because we didn't have any fire support, we couldn't really engage them from a distance, so he's managed to get these quite far up. My IS-2 manages to snipe the back one. Ideally, I want to kill this one in the middle here, so that it blows up and kills off the one behind, and this one blows up and potentially kills off the one behind that. But I got a Rav Vertica here, and that's going to be trying to do its best to get the Zooka on target and not get killed themselves, but... There goes one, there goes the second, as the IS-2 does manage to land a shot. Now just the last one to go. There's like remote controlled explosive tanks. And the last one should be going down any second, there it goes. As the bazooka takes it out. <laughs> Max range bazooka shot there, making sure the Razvodka don't go down with it. But meanwhile, Valdus, good job breaking through. Fireflies in the center, also demolishing armor as it comes up onto the hill here. Panther dying the tiger just before it. Poor Commando's taking a little bit of napalm to the face. Because it was quite spread out due to anti-air, not too much of a problem. Right, currently my SU-76 is looking for the counter battery onto the Multia Vilfakwefa. They're going to need a couple of direct hits in order to kill that because it does have some armor. Uh, but it's worth giving it a go. There's a chance. Now, with all of those Borgvards out the way, the IS-2 moving up with the Rex behind him. Looking for the kill onto the Sturmpanzer. Really, really long reload on this thing. Unfortunately, <laughs> gonna miss that shot. Left side, still doing very well as Sethor moves aggressively forwards. Grim guy supporting. Great job by these two on the left hand side there. Baudis, great job in the mid. Right side, <laughs> McShab trying to hold off all of the shiny German armor that is opposite him. Big multi vilfa for strikes coming in here, forcing Martin to fall back with some of his infantry temporarily. I must admit, these T-34s on the right-hand side probably didn't get used as much as they should have because I was like mostly focusing on the left. But 81mm mortar going to be the next target of the IS-2, and we managed to kill that off. Razvitka, uh, currently just trying to lead the charge for all of this armor, but now another elephant on the way. Now, the previous elephant did get dealt with, with another replacement on the field. It's going to be difficult for the IS-2 to get shots on target. So what I'm going to try and do with my IS-2 is specifically drive in a position that is blocked by this building. So you'll see the line of sight here. I'm going to stop <laughs> just with this building in, in the middle here. Unfortunately, Pack 40 on the flank gets the side shot twice before the other tanks can do anything about it and the pack 40 also kills off the t-34-85 so yeah, this pack 40 that was a little bit further back really really paid off a lot killing the is-2 and the t-34 there unfortunate because we would have potentially been able to take control of this flag and I uh, was starting to worry more and more that we would win this if it continued to go on as we did push back briefly to a 16-16. So there's 35 minutes left total in the game. 
you can see that if we hold 17 to 15, the game will end in five minutes. So it's just a matter of holding that advantage long enough that we take the win. At the moment, the best way I can see us doing that is by me providing some artillery fire and allowing Valdis to get back on the flag in the mid. Left side's doing pretty well, so they can keep contesting flags there. And we just gotta kinda like stem the bleeding on the right hand side and stop them from breaking all the way through, which McShab's trying his best to do. Uh, IS2 on the main road is currently engaging this Tiger on the right hand side. Tiger will have trouble penetrating an IS2 at max range. But the IS2 should absolutely destroy it in one shot. There's a second bounce. The Tiger struggling. Burning. A town in the distance as that last shot comes through and the Tiger goes boom. Job done. Takes out the Fashimir FG42 soon after with the HE round. And now the SU-76 is trying to take out some more Wildflagwerfers. Rosvetka, still in position up on the hill right now. The P40s likely to kill them off, particularly with the Tiger and the Elephant helping out. Subby's tank in a very, very bad position right now as the side shot comes through from the Tiger and gets the job done. 203, back in commission as the Supply has been resupplying that for the majority of the game. SU-76 is continuing their engagement on the right-hand side. Now I've got an SU-152 joining the T-3485, so I can also significantly help with any infantry uh, pushing across the open. Some Sepurdy on the way in the half-tracks. The half-tracks are going to make it a lot more likely that they actually get into position. Because there's quite a lot of RT and suppression coming through this town. If they're in a half track with a weapon on it, they don't automatically reload when they come under suppression. Which is really, really handy. Unless they're like fully suppressed, in which case they might unload. But aircraft going down there on the left hand side. My arty does manage to kill off the P40. Uh, but now, going to be unloading this Apathy. They're going to be three vet, thanks to the commando leader here. And the M2A1 half tracks are going to be able to push up aggressively. Another artillery shell comes in from the 203, takes out another P40 on the left. Tiger goes down on the hill. You see my SU76 is now engaging the SDH 71 as well. We're starting to kind of break down the forces that our Endymion is relying upon. And now with this, the high veterancy Sepadi pushing forwards, I'm really hoping I can get better, the better of the Fauschimega and the Paragadatisti, Fauschimpanzabia, the Stug also needs to go. So SU-76 is now focusing on engaging the Stug 3. That's my next target. This IS-2 moving quite deep forwards in the town. It's kind of risky in a way because there's a good chance that they could bring in an AT plane or something that could kill me, particularly like the third Fauschimjäger for example could maybe use a HS129 to get side shots onto the IS-2 but as long as I keep it amongst the buildings it's going to be difficult for it for the enemy to find line of sight and in this case we, we are able to take out the Shug 3 so the Sepadi have a chance of pushing forwards and continuing to contest this flag but with the shots now coming in from the Elephant and the Tiger on the ridge we're going to be a little bit careful here I'm also going to need more supply soon <laughs> for my SU-76s because I have been using them a lot. Uh, the B4 currently engaging units on the hill. Tiger is going to get taken out by my IS-2 1943. So that was a good shot. And you can see with the shots now coming in from the M4A 176 from Martin on the hill. We're able to pin down a lot of this infantry. But my M2A1 Holding a good position right now. You can see the timer is slowly ticking down. That's also in part due to Grimguy taking control of this flag. 
So even if I do lose this flag, we're still counting down the enemy timer. Matush is briefly firing there, but then holding fire once again. IS2, you can see, is moving forwards aggressively. Very, very risky again for the IS2 to be this far up. Particularly when there's actually kind of a good chance of there being a Panzerstrike infantry here. Like that Fasher Panzer out there. In this case, going to be trying to use the buildings to block line of sight as I reverse. Stug 3 has come up, but check out that bombing strike from Martin. Absolutely clutch. The two Marauders coming in with the four 450 kilogram bombs absolutely wiping the floor there of all of that infantry and putting the flag in our favor. 19 to 13, now two minutes left on the clock. It looks like we've done just about enough to break the camel's back. Beautiful bombing strike. AA of mine actually managing to claim a couple kills here. This one back here is three veterancy, so it's actually pretty accurate and takes two of those JU88 kills. BF109 also in a bad spot. Yeah, once again, the IS2 moving forwards, this time with the commandos, because most of my sapodi are dead. Main thing I need to do is try and kill that Fauschapan's Advia so it's no longer a threat to the IS2. And then we can be a bully against things like the Panzer IV and the Stugs at close range. A Stug or a Panzer IV can penetrate an IS2 at close range, so you do have to be a little bit careful. As long as the IS-2 fires first, it will always one-shot the enemy tank, so in that respect, we're all good. And you can see here, I'm specifically targeting the Fauschapan Zavia. I do not want that causing me problems. And now, Valdus bringing a 17-pounder up to the ridge, pretty clutch, to be honest, as it does manage to kill off the Panzer IV there. We'll also be able to engage the Stug M42 with its line of sight from the ridge. New supply vehicle has arrived to resupply my SU-176s, but just kind of waiting for the end of the game now. BF-109 G6R2 coming in with the 50 kilogram bombs, not quite managing to hit the mark as the IS-2 was already falling back. multi Wilfogwerfer currently suppressing all of the infantry and forcing those back. You can see that flags had been taken back on the left-hand side as well. Grim Guy and Sethor's push slowly broken down by the superior um, uh, German armor. But the grind continues in the middle, and we only need to take control of one of these flags briefly in order for us to win the game. So the game is still going, and we're just waiting for a good opportunity to finish things off. These AB Paras from Vaud are certainly going to be helping with that, as they are three veterancy, ten-man squads with a sniper. Really, really difficult for the RDT to deal with. The RTT, especially the Decima RDT, they would be fantastic at close range. 150 meter range, these commandos don't stand a chance. Anywhere outside of that, the commandos and the AB Paras are going to win nine times out of ten. Well, probably 10 times out of 10. But yeah, here we go. Move. Because they're on the move there, they're taking so much damage. And there's just way too many of these AB Pallas. Going to take control of this flag in the mid. IS-2 still trying to support close range. Got to be a little bit careful of the RDT on moving through and getting an AT onto my IS-2. Like, they do have the Panzerstreck there, but they're going to get pinned. IS-2 finishes them off itself. And we managed to do a decent job. Ju88 trying to get its bombs off. Doesn't manage to do so, I don't believe. There we have it. Ten seconds left on the clock. It slowly ticks down as the final push has been made. Flag was capped over here as well. Good job done. After a solid 34 minutes and 26 seconds. And there we have it. In the end, 2,937 kills to 1,205 losses. Great job by Valdus to continue that engagement in the middle. 
and good job by Grimm and Sethor to do well on the left hand side. Martin held strong on the ridge as well against the 2v1 so that was good. On the right hand side um, there was some good armor play from our opponents managing to push back our team there. So actually kind of a nice game, uh, kind of a more balanced slits game. Another reason that I wanted to show this one off today. Actually one five twos proving how strong they can be, uh, particularly for their price of 70 points. IS2s in this game maybe could have done better. T34s on the right hand side though definitely helping out a lot by picking off a lot of the Stugs. SU85s paid themselves off even if they didn't last too long. SU76s really really doing very very well for us in this game. Continuously applying pressure to enemy AA and also the enemy tanks when they were stationary. Super important. 203 getting some sweet direct hits, killed off the Stjampanzer, killed off two of the P40 with direct hits, uh, killed off one of the IGs, uh, more SU-152 kills, the IS-2 here getting two Tiger kills is always nice, and at the end the Sapodi um, pushing in to the town to finish off some of the damaged Panzergrenz and Falschermjäger. And of course the AA, the, one of them being vetted up by the Commander. Well, I don't think it was a commander, it was the artillery leader that was connected to a commander. Regardless, a fun game, and I really enjoyed it. Hopefully you guys did too. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.